rescheduling cannabis is not decriminalization, descheduling, or legalization. Let's talk about it because the differences between these words matter. Hell, you may not even know the subtle differences between all of this legal jargon, which is totally normal. Many of my colleagues didn't know either, and they're experienced cannabis compliance officers. So let's unpack these terms what this means for the industry we have fought so hard to legitimize, and what you can start doing today to help prepare for the worst case scenario, which in my opinion is rescheduling cannabis. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think is gonna be the most detrimental for the cannabis industry if Biden decriminalizes, legalizes, or deschedules, or worse, reschedules for the industry? Hey. My name is Bree, and I'm a cannabis compliance expert that builds and scales stronger compliance teams for licensed cannabis businesses. If you want to learn more about how I can help you, click the link below to learn more. In October 2022, President Biden had some big news for cannabis and the cannabis industry. First, he stated to pardon all individuals previously convicted by the federal government of simple cannabis possession charges. Simple cannabis possession means that a person had a small amount of cannabis on their person, but with no intent to sell or distribute. The charge must also not be connected with another crime, such as a robbery or assault, for example, which newsflash, no one is in federal prison for simple possession of cannabis charges. Most cannabis charges come with growing or possession with an intent to distribute or sell, not just simple cannabis possession, which is a big problem because the majority of individuals charged with cannabis felonies are charged with an intent to distribute or to sell. This article unpacks this topic a bit more. If you want to learn more about the true meaning of Biden's statement, then click the link below in the captions where I link this article for you. The second part of Biden's announcement is to urge all state governors to pardon state level offenses of simple cannabis possession as well, which is actually where the majority of simple possession charges come from, which is great, but Texas, already said they're not complying. Nope, not for us. And third of Biden's plan, which is what I personally have the most problem with and we'll discuss in more depth today. Biden requested for the Secretary of Health and Human Services and the U.S. Attorney General to review the status of cannabis under the Controlled Substance Act. He called for the review of the status, which is very concerning language in my book. So what are the differences between legalization, decriminalization, rescheduling, and descheduling? Well, to put it very simply, what individuals and companies are persecuted for and in what manner. Decriminalizing means that something like that substance, a plant, means enforcement will stop treating that as illegal or as in a criminal offense. And ironically enough, Washington DC functions this way and has decriminalized cannabis possession of up to two ounces for, of cannabis for individuals over the age of 21. Essentially, adults can be gifted cannabis, but they cannot buy cannabis similar to Colorado, California, or many other adult use legalized states. In my opinion, this would be the best case scenario at the federal level to deschedule cannabis from the Controlled Substance Act, CSA, and to decriminalize cannabis at the federal level. While legalization is the action of making something that was previously illegal permissible by law. This opens the door for businesses to sell cannabis unlike decriminalization. The problem here is that there is over-regulation that overburden the businesses. Let's look at Canada's legalization structure for an example. The use of cannabis for recreational purposes became legal across the country on October 17th, 2018 under the Cannabis Act, which 
quote unquote, creates a legal and regulatory framework for controlling the production, distribution, sale, and possession of cannabis in Canada, AKA to have a legalized cannabis industry. So take a look at this table right here. Essentially, the federal government set a required framework, then allowed each province and municipality to establish additional rules. In US terms, a province is similar to like a state, and the municipality is similar to a city with a local government. Now, let's talk about descheduling and rescheduling. Descheduling means removing cannabis from the Controlled Substance Act. The Controlled Substance Act, or CSA, places all substances which were in some manner regulated under existing federal law into one of five schedules. This placement is based on substance medical use, the potential for abuse, and safety or dependency liability. While rescheduling means removed from the schedule one down to schedule two through schedule five which in my opinion would be very detrimental to the cannabis industry and hand over the industry to big pharma. So why does this even matter? Well, the industry that we know today would be gone with rescheduling. Today, cannabis is classified as schedule one, the most prohibitive of the five classification, which means cannabis is a quote unquote, high potential for addiction with no medical value. We cannot even perform research to confirm or prove that the plant has no medical use at this point in time. While rescheduling cannabis would send an industry down a regulatory pathway much different than the current state-by-state -state framework, what we know now as the cannabis industry. Also, the US Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, would absolutely be involved and makes the industry even more overregulated while the smaller operators are struggling right now to just stay afloat. FDA oversight would then further delay the ability of cannabis companies to bring their products to market because then we would have to go under a regulatory approval path. This would ultimately lead to the businesses needing government grants just to make it through the FDA approval process. Again, not idea for small to medium businesses. In addition to the overburdensome red tape, the industry would still have to be under the provisions of the IRS code 280E, where essentially cannabis businesses pay around 72 cents on every single dollar to the federal government just to be in existence. That's on top of paying on average $2,000 a month to have a bank account to be able to actually store their money somewhere. So comparing rescheduling to descheduling, this would likely leave in place the state regulatory regimes that we currently have from state to state between California, Colorado, New York, New Jersey, and so forth. So what can you do right now to prepare? So while you're trying to wrap your head around how quickly our industry changes, here is one action you need to do today. Look into good manufacturing practices, GMP, training with certification. And here is actually a really great resource for you to get started today. And I will also link below in the comments so you can take a further look to start with your GMP certification today. Remember, you can be a fire starter, firefighter, or fire preventer in your cannabis business. If you want to be proactive in fire preventing in your cannabis business to always be one step ahead of compliance risks, then click this video right here to learn more about the four steps to build a comprehensive compliance team in your cannabis business. And don't forget to subscribe below where I provide monthly compliance and regulatory updates state by state and weekly videos to help you improve your cannabis business. See you on the other side.